Welcome to this crash course on automating Outlook with Python using the Outlook API. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to leverage Python in Outlook API to interact with Microsoft Outlook programmatically, allowing you to automate various email related tasks. This is a beginner friendly tutorial. The only requirement is you have some experience using Python. Throughout this course, I will teach you everything you need to get started using Outlook API in Python to automate a variety of Outlook tasks. The Outlook API is part of the Microsoft Graph API that provides a powerful interface for developers to access and manipulate Outlook data. Microsoft Graph API is a unified endpoint that allows developers to interact with various Microsoft 365 services like Excel, Power BI, OneDrive, SharePoint and Teams. It serves as a single point of access to use Microsoft's cloud services. In terms of the use cases, you can use the Outlook API for email management to sort and organize emails automatically, data extraction to pull key information from emails and attachments, integrate with generative AI to create your own AI system to draft and send emails, and many more other use cases. For the agenda, I will start out by setting up a Python environment dedicated to the course that includes creating a Python virtual environment and install required Python dependencies. We will then proceed to set up an Azure app and configure the Outlook API service in the Azure console. The final segment will focus on practical Python exercises like how to generate access tokens to connect to Outlook API and various Outlook automation examples like reply to an email, download email attachments, etc. Enough for the intro. Let's dive right into the tutorial. To create a Python virtual environment, go ahead and launch your terminal. On the terminal run, the command python-mvenv followed by the environment name. This will create a project directory to be used for the project. CD into the project directory and activate the Python virtual environment. To install the Python dependencies, run the command pip install msal python-.env httpx. The msal package is the official Python library used to facilitate the authentication to the Graph API. HTTTX is a modern HTTP client for Python that supports both sync and async operations. And python.env loads environment variables from the .env files into Python applications. Once the Python packages are installed, Create the env file to store the environment variable. And we are now finished setting up the Python project environment. The next step is to create an Azure app to allow Python to connect to Microsoft Graph API endpoint. Open a browser and navigate to portal.azure.com. If you don't have an Azure account, go ahead and sign up for an account. It is free. I forgot to mention that using Microsoft Graph API is completely free. Navigate to App Registrations. Click New Registration to create an Azure app. An Azure app is a HTTP-based service for hosting web applications, REST APIs, and mobile backends. Give the app a name. For the account type, Choose the account type that fits your scenario. Here, I am choosing accounts in any organizational directory and personal Microsoft accounts to allow me to use both my work account and personal account. In the redirect URI, choose Web Earth platform. For the URI, I am going to set it to localhost with port number 8000. Click register to create the app. On the left panel, expand Manage. Click Certificates and Secrets. Click New Client Secret. Click Add to generate a client secret. The client secret will be the key to authenticate our Python programs to the Azure server. 
open the .env file. Inside the file, create an environment variable called client secret and assign the client secret value. Click overview to the app overview page. Copy the application ID and assign the ID to an environment variable called application ID. Save the env file and close. Now we are done setting up the Azure app to allow Python to connect to Microsoft Graph API. We can now dive into the Python exercise to learn how to automate a number of Outlook tasks. Launch your code editor and create a Python file called msgraph.py. The msgraph module contains the function to generate access token to connect to Microsoft Graph API. At the top of the file, import the necessary Python packages. Next, define a constant code msgraph base URL to store Microsoft Graph API base endpoint. Now create a function called get access token with parameters application ID, client secret, and scopes. This function will handle the authentication process and return an access token for the Microsoft Graph API. Inside the function, create an instance of the MSAL confidential client application and pass the application ID and client secret arguments. The confidential client application class is designed for applications that can securely store a client secret. Next, check if there's a refresh token stored in a text file called refresh token. If a refresh token exists, attempt to acquire a new access token using the refresh token. Otherwise, no refresh token is found. We will then proceed with the authorization code flow using the get authorization request URL function with the scopes supplied. The authorization request URL function generates an authorization URL, then web browser.open will open the page, then asks the user to input the authorization code they receive. It uses this code to request an access token. Finally, we will insert an if statement to check if access token is generated. If not, raise an exception with an error message. To test the get access token, create the main function as the entry point. Inside the function, load the environment variables from the env file, then create the variables to store the application ID, client secret, and scopes. Now, insert a try accept block to call the get access token function, print the headers, and handle any exceptions that might occur. Call the main function at the end of the file. Now save the file and run the script. If you are connecting to the mail endpoint based on the scopes defined for the first time, you will be prompted to log in to your Outlook account and grant permission to the app. Simply click Accept to grant the permission needed. When an authorization code is generated, it will open the redirect URL page you defined in the Azure app. Copy the authorization code and paste it in the URL in the terminal. If everything is set up correctly, you should see the generated access token in the headers. When the access token is generated for the first time, it will create the refresh token file and store the refresh token inside. Next time, when you generate an access token, it will simply load the refresh token from the refresh token file and generates a refreshed access token. Now we know how to generate an access token to connect to Microsoft Graph API endpoint. Let's dive into the examples on how to automate Outlook Mail using Python. For the first Outlook exercise, we are going to learn how to retrieve emails from an Outlook account. Because this is a crash course, I will go through each example quickly. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below, and I will try to reply them when I get a chance. Go ahead, import the required Python packages. Next, 
create the main function as the entry point. Inside the function, create the application ID, client secret, and scopes variables. Then define the API endpoint for the email retrieval. The core functionality of the script revolves around retrieving emails in batches. To demonstrate, I will insert a loop to iterate the first four items in two iterations. Inside the loop, create a dictionary called params to define the parameters for the Outlook API request. Top limits the number of emails retrieved in each API call to two. Select is used to specify the fields to be returned. Skip is used to skip over previously retrieved emails. You can think this as the offset parameter. And order by is used to set the field to be used for the result sorting order. In this case, the most recent emails will get retrieved first. To retrieve the emails, make a get request providing the endpoint headers and parameters. Found the API response, store the JSON output into an object called JSON response. To iterate the messages from the JSON response object, we will reference the value key and print each email's properties. You can find the entire list of properties from Microsoft Graph API's documentation, which you can find the link in the description below. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you type everything correctly, you should see each email's data is printed successfully. And that covers everything for this example. From the last example, we learned how to retrieve emails from an Outlook account. But what if you only want to retrieve emails from a specific Outlook folder? Create a Python file called outlook.py. We will use the Outlook module to store all the functions to perform different Outlook tasks. In the Outlook module, import the required Python packages showing on the screen. To retrieve emails from a specific folder, we first need to figure out the target folder ID. Create a function called search folder with parameters, headers, and folder name. Here I will set the default folder to the drafts folder. Inside the search folder function, create a variable for the API endpoint, then make a get request call. From the response, we will iterate each folder and compare the folder name against the folder name argument. If the expression returns true, the function will return the folder object. If none of the folder's name match the folder name argument, the function will return none. Because within a folder, we can have subfolders or nested folders. Create another function called getSubfolders with parameters, headers, and folder ID. Inside the getSubfolders function, create a variable for the API endpoint, then make a get request call. From the API response, we will reference the value key to return the folder object. If folder is not found, the function will return an empty list. To simplify messages retrieval, here I will create a function called getMessages with parameters, headers, Folder ID, fields, top, order by, order by descending, and max results. To make the function a bit more flexible, we will check if folder ID is provided. If not, we can assume that we want to retrieve emails from the entire Outlook account. Otherwise, retrieve the emails from the target folder where the folder ID is provided. Inside the get messages function, Create the params dictionary to set the API call parameters. Then create an empty list called messages to store the email messages. If there are additional emails we need to retrieve, the API response will return the next page link URL. 
create a variable called next link to store the pagination URL. To retrieve the messages, insert a for while loop with the conditions where next link is not empty and max results is less than the number messages retrieved. Inside the loop, make a get request to retrieve the messages and store them in the messages list. Then check if next link URL is available by checking against the add data next link key. When we use next link URL as the API endpoint to make a request call, we only need to set the top parameter to specify the number of emails to be returned. Once while loop is terminated, return the messages list. And these are the three functions we need to return emails from a specific folder. Now let's go back to the example script. In the main script, import the search folder, get subfolders, and get messages functions from the Outlook module. In the main function, define the folder name where we want to retrieve the emails. Then use the search folder function to return the folder ID. Once we have the folder ID, we can use the get messages function to retrieve the emails. To retrieve emails from a subfolder, use the get subfolders function to return the child folders. Then we can iterate each child folder and pass the child folder ID to the get messages function to retrieve emails from that folder. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you type everything correctly, you should see each email subject is printed successfully, including the child folders. And that covers everything for this example. In this example, we are going to learn how to search emails. In the Outlook module, create a function called search messages with parameters headers, search query, filter, folder ID, fields, top, and max results. Inside the function, insert an if statement to check if folder ID is provided and set the API endpoint accordingly. Next, create the parameters dictionary with the search, filter, select, and top parameters. Create the messages list and next link variable to store the messages and URL to the next page of results. To retrieve the messages, insert a for while loop with the conditions where next link is not empty and max results is less than the number messages retrieved. Inside the loop, retrieve the messages until while loop conditions fail, then return the messages list. Now go back to the main script. In the main function, create a variable to define the search query, then use the search messages function to search the emails. The default top value is five, so we will be retrieving the first five emails. From the search messages function result, iterate through the emails found individually and print the emails properties. And don't forget to import the search messages function from the Outlook module. Now let's test the script by run the main function. If you typed everything correctly, you should see each email's properties printed successfully. And that covers everything for this example. In this example, you're going to learn how to send emails and how to send emails with attachments. This is probably one of the most important examples since 70% of the Outlook automation tasks involving sending emails. In the Outlook module, create two functions, create attachment and get mime type. The get mime type function will examine the file provided and return the file mime type that needs to be included when we attach a file in an email message. The create attachment function will load the file and returns as a dictionary containing the required properties to attach a file. You can think the output as an Outlook attachment object. 
back to the main script. From the Outlook module, import the create attachment function to draft an email message. Here, I will create a function called draft message body with two parameters, subject and attachment. This is just a basic example of drafting an email message. There are additional email message properties you can include. I will link the URL to the full list of email message properties in the description below. For demonstration, I will attach two different types of image files when I send an email. Inside the draft message body function, create a dictionary and include the keys to construct the email messages. If you don't want to include an attachment, simply remove the attachments key. In the main function, create a list called attachment to store the file you want to attach to an email message. Make sure you use the create attachment function to convert each file to an attachment object. Next, create a variable to store the API endpoint URL. For this example, I will send two emails to myself by using a loop. In the loop, create a dictionary called messages with a key called message and use the draft message body function to draft the email message. Then make a post request code to send the emails. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you typed everything correctly, you should see the message email sent successfully. And that covers everything for this example. In this example, you're going to learn how to download email attachments. In the Outlook module, Create a function called getMessageByFilter with parameters, headers, filter, folder ID, fields, top, and max results. We will be using this function to return emails with attachments. Inside the function, insert an if statement to check if folder ID is provided and set the API endpoint accordingly. Next, create the parameters dictionary with the search, filter, select, and top keys to set the parameters. Create the messages list and next link variable to store the messages and URL to the next page of results. Inside the loop, retrieve the messages until while loop conditions fail. Then return the messages list. To download the attachments of an email, create a function called getAttachments with parameters, headers, and message ID. Inside the function, Define the API endpoint to return the attachments attached to a message ID. Then make a get request call. From the API response, reference the value key to return a list of attachment objects of a message. To download an attachment, create a function called download attachment with parameters, headers, message ID, attachment ID, attachment name, and attachment directory. Inside the function, define the API endpoint to retrieve the raw contents of the attachment based on message ID and attachment ID. Then make a get request call. To download the file, first, create a path object to define the file path. Then use write bytes function to write the data. Once file download is finished, returns true to exit the function. In the main script, import the get messages, get message by filter, get attachments, search folder, and download attachment functions from the Outlook module. I will demonstrate two different ways to download attachments. One is using the get messages function to iterate each email message to check if a message has attachments. The other approach is using get message by filter to return emails with attachments. The drawback with using getMessageByFilter method 
is you cannot control the order how emails will be returned. To process the attachments, create a function called process attachments. In the function, use the get attachments function to retrieve the attachment objects of a message. Then use the download attachment function to download the attachment. In the main function, set the target directory where the attachments will be saved. Then create a variable called target folder to specify the folder name where emails will be retrieved. This step is optional, but generally, I prefer to be more specific where the emails are coming from. And use the search folder function to return the folder ID. As I mentioned before, I will share two approaches to download email attachments. The get messages function is better if you want to set the email sorting filter to get more accurate outcome. For example, if you want to check if any email from the past seven days have attachments, the get messages method will do the job well. On the other hand, the get message by filter function is better if you just want to download attachments of emails from a specific folder without regarding the order where emails will be returned. I will return the emails using the get message function first. From the response, iterate each message and check if email has attachments using the has attachments key. If value returns true, use the process attachments function to download the attachments. Now let's test the first approach by calling the main function. If the script is executed successfully, it will retrieve the latest emails first based on the default sorting order logic supplied and as well as create the target directory since the directory is not created initially. Then it will download the attachments individually to the target directory. Now let's test out the second approach using the get message by filter function. This time, because we cannot specify the sorting logic to control how emails will be retrieved, the function will only return emails with attachments. And that covers everything for this example. In this example, you're going to learn how to create Outlook folders. This automation is perfect for people who want to streamline their emails organization and categorize emails by different topics. In the Outlook module, create a function called create folder with parameters, headers, and folder name. Inside the create folder function, define the mail folders API endpoint, create the params dictionary with a key called display name to set the Outlook folder name. Then make a post request call to create the folder. In case you want to create subfolders, create another function called create subfolder with parameters, headers, parent folder ID, and subfolder name. The source code of the function is identical to the create folder function, except the API endpoint, in which you need to attach the parent folder ID. In the main script, import the two functions from the Outlook module. In the main function, Create a variable to define the Outlook folder name you want to create. Then use the create folder function to create the folder. If you want to create subfolders under a folder, store the folder ID in a variable called parent folder ID. Then iterate a list of subfolder name in which you want to create. Then use the create subfolder function to create the subfolders. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. From the output, I can see that both the main folder and subfolders got created. And to verify, in Outlook, I should see all the folders are available as well. And that covers everything for this example. In this example, you're going to learn how to reply emails 
using Outlook API. This is the API I use in my AI agent app to automatically reply emails based on the email recipient and subject. Definitely a very handy automation if you are someone who is too lazy to reply emails by yourself. To ensure we are replying emails from a specific folder, like the inbox folder, in the Outlook module, create a function called getFolder with parameters, headers, and folder ID. We will use this function to check the folder location of an email. Inside the function, define the API endpoint. Then make a get request call. To reply an email message, create another function called reply to message with parameters, headers, message ID, and reply body. Inside the function, define the API endpoint. Then create a dictionary code data with a key code comment and value from the reply body argument. To reply an email, make a post request call. In the main script, import the get messages, get folder, and reply to message functions from the Outlook module. Then iterate each email message and retrieve parent folder using the get folder function. To ensure I am only replying to emails in the inbox folder, I will insert an if statement to check the folder name and in the email subject. I only want to reply to emails where subject contains the keyword test email. To reply an email, call the reply to message function and provide the message ID to reply and reply body for the reply message. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you typed everything correctly, you should see the output reply to email followed by the email subject. And in Outlook, I can see the last two emails are replied with, thank you for the email. And that covers everything for this example. In this example, you're going to learn how to create a draft email with attachments. Import the required Python packages showing on the screen. To create a draft email, we don't need to create any new functions in the Outlook module. In the main script, create a function called draft message body to construct the email message. Make sure you modify the function accordingly based on your use case. To create a drafted email message, we want to make a request call to the messages API endpoint. For demonstration, I will create three drafted emails with attachments using a for loop. Inside the loop, create the subject variable and use draft message body function to construct the email message object. Then make a post request call to create the drafted email in Outlook. Noticing that here for the JSON body, we don't need to specify the message key. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you typed everything correctly, you should see the status code 201 return for each message created. And that covers everything for this example. From the last example, you learned how to create draft email messages. In this example, you will learn how to send the draft emails. In the Outlook module, create two functions, retrieve draft messages and send draft messages. In the retrieve draft messages function, create a variable for the API endpoint, then create a params dictionary to define the filter conditions. In the params dictionary, Use the filter parameter to set the expression is draft field is equals to true and use select parameter to return ID, subject, and parent folder ID fields. Then make a get request call to return the draft messages from the target folder. And to send the draft messages in the send draft message function, create the variables to store the message and API endpoint.
then make a post request code to send the draft email. In the main script, import the send draft message search folder and retrieve draft messages functions from the Outlook module. To send a draft email, it is a two step process. In the main function, use the search folder function to return the draft folder as a folder object. Then use the retrieve draft messages function to draft emails. From there, iterate each draft message and use the send draft message function to send the draft message. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you typed everything correctly, you should see the message successfully send draft with subject printed. And that covers everything for this example. In this example, you'll learn how to delete emails using the Outlook API. This can be useful for automating inbox cleaning up programmatically. In the Outlook module, create a function called delete message with parameters, headers, and message ID. Inside the function, define the API endpoint and make a delete request code to delete a message. If the deletion is successful, you can return a success message or handle any errors that may occur. In the main script, import the search folder, get messages, and delete message functions. To demonstrate the deletion operation, I will retrieve the email messages from the inbox. Then I will insert a loop to iterate the first 10 emails. Inside the loop, I will use the delete message function with message ID to delete an email. In this case, I only want to delete emails with test drafted or test email with attachment are in the email subject. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you typed everything correctly, you should see the message deleted when an email is deleted. And that covers everything for this example. Remember to use the delete function carefully as deleting emails is irreversible. Now let's move on to the last example. Move an email to a folder. This is going to be the last example for the Outlook API crash course. In this example, you will learn how to move an email to a folder. In the Outlook module, create a function called move email to folder with parameters, headers, message ID, and destination folder ID. Inside the function, Define the Outlook API endpoint. Then create a dictionary called params with a key called destination ID and value being the target folder ID. To move an email message to a folder, make a post request call. In the main script, import the search folder, get folder, move email to folder, and get messages functions. In the main function, specify the source folder where you want to retrieve the emails. This setup is optional. You can retrieve emails from an entire Outlook account as well. Then specify the target folder where you want to move the emails to. Next, use the get messages function to retrieve the email messages. From there, iterate each message and move the email messages using the move email to folder function. Now let's test the script by calling the main function. If you typed everything correctly, you should see the message detail for the messages that are moved to the target folder. And that concludes this Outlook API crash course. Hopefully you find the content useful. Remember to always refer to the official Microsoft documentation for the most up-to-date information and questions. If you have any questions related to Outlook API or have any feedback, please leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!
See you in the next one.